first of all let us try to uh, define this big data in very simple terms how exactly this big data is going to be okay so the first thing what you are going to have is uh, initially there was not uh, any term like big data small data medium data something of that sort we have only data we have only data okay the data is uh, expected to be stored in a storage system right the data is expected to be stored in a storage system and uh, we call that storage system as a database right we call the storage system as a database so this is what is your data i expect this data to be stored in the database so can anybody tell me what are the different types of databases what you are having what are the different types of databases the databases what you have here can be classified into two types one type of systems are called as the transaction systems transaction systems and uh, second type of systems what you have here are nothing but the analytical systems basically analytical systems analytical systems okay so the main thing is uh, day to day applications are gener generated in this transactions and uh, reporting applications whatever you are having in terms of business objects uh, sap micro strategy cognos these are all the things that are implemented in the form of this uh, analytical systems like this basically used for transactions and these are analytical systems that we call okay now uh, lavandia or pinky uh, can you tell me what would be the maximum size of data that you have seen in these types of databases gigabyte no yeah transactional i think it will be gigabytes and Our, the analytical system will be in terabytes maybe terabytes maximum maximum so yeah terabytes yeah so mm -hmm. the amount of size that is uh, used for the purpose of storing the data is nothing but your gigabytes here but even mm -hmm. when you take your high end applications in the form of your chase bank the bank of america okay mm -hmm. or any online uh, marketing uh, and retail systems like target cs these particular systems when you take uh, it might be in the form of terabyte only maybe in terms of 100 terabytes or something of that sort okay so this is the way back in uh, around 2005 to 2010 like that this was the scenario okay but what has happened is uh, we eventually got into we eventually got into the digital age okay what exactly is the digital age digital age in the sense uh, for every type of uh, daily activities that we want to do okay be it be if we want to go to a movie or else be it be if we want to purchase a product be it be, uh, be, it be if we want to apply for uh, okay anything what you want to do without internet or without facebook or without social networking or without any type of any type of digital media you will not be able to take any decision that means that uh, your daily activity or the entire company's daily activities or the enterprises daily activities are, are totally dependent on the digital system what we are having here lavanya can you agree on this one yes okay now when we have such type of digital information that is existing okay now what happens is that there are different sources that are trying to emit such type of digital information right what are the sources yes. that you are having uh, yeah. you have the information that is coming in the form of social networking right social networking yes. what are the social networking things you have here you have the facebook, uh, facebook have, twitter uh, all those uh, social networking sites that you take you can have this uh, google file system as well as you are having this uh, satellite information you can have the sensors which is basically used to give you the patient vitals okay mm -hmm. as well as you take the uh, retail marketing in terms of target okay yes. cs all these things okay and similarly we are living in a competitive world and uh, for the purpose of facing this particular competition what is very much required is uh, your data is very much required your data is very much required okay back in terms of the transaction systems and in the analytical systems uh, what we are having is uh, we will be having only one type of data what is the data structured data or the relational data right structured mm -hmm. data or the relational data but nowadays the data is generated in multiple forms what are those forms you can have the structured data you can have the semi structured data as well as you can have your uh, uh, unstructured data also as well unstructured data okay let me tell you one thing suppose if you are having a data center okay i think uh,
Nagarjun. Uh, we have this data center, right? Within the data center, we, we can have thousands of uh, nodes working in a cluster, right? We can have thousands of nodes working in a cluster. Okay. In such a type of cluster, in such type of cluster, what generally happens is uh, with the help of uh, the current analytics, what we are having, what we are having is uh, I can tell you on a certain date when the node will fail, when the node will fail. So such type of uh, intelligent analytics has been built into today's systems basically. So that's why what happens is uh, organizations does not need only the internal data. Organizations are expected to have the external data also as well. Okay. And uh, in order to, when this much amount of data is being generated, there are two challenges that we are going to have. Okay. When we are having this much amount of data that is getting generated, there are two challenges that you are having. So Pinky or uh, Lavanya or Nagarjun, can you tell me what are the challenges that you are having here? Uh, data, uh, actually yeah. the input data will be more, much more than uh, like uh, storing the capacities, the size of the database. There you go. So that's why one challenge what you are having here is a storage. Thanks. And what is the other challenge that you can have? Maybe uh, like uh, retrieving data back or uh, so like duplication of duplication yeah, of data or like uh, stack stacking of so much of unused data. This is not about your processing. Unused, I mean, uh, not useful, not much useful. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. when we are piling that much amount of data, we really don't know what data is useful and what data might not be useful. That for that reason, what we need to do is that we need to start processing the data, right? We need to start yes. processing the data. So the second challenge, what you're going to have is uh, processing the data. That is the second thing. Okay. And third thing that you're having is uh, once you have this data that is getting processed, uh, the third important activity that you need to focus on is uh, analyzing the data. These are the three challenges that you're going to have. Storage, processing along with analysis. Okay. When you go back to the World systems in terms of this transaction or analytical systems, you really don't have any challenge. And the reason being, uh, you you can have some terabytes of storage that can exist, okay. And within that one, you can store only the necessary data that is available, and then you can start using the data for your reporting and analysis. Lavanya, you are talking about Informatica. Even in the Informatica, also, I may not be bringing all the type of data from the old systems, but I'll be bringing only the data that is required, right? In terms of dimensions and facts. So, yes. That is the reason what happens is you have only the limited data, but nowadays what is happening is uh, if you try to take something like Facebook or any other type of uh, systems, generally what happens is, uh, generally what is happening is uh, Facebook uh, on an average according to the uh, census, uh, it will be generating something like 250 terabytes of data per day, per day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to store all that amount of data. Even when you try to take this uh, Google file system, even when you try to take this Google file system or any other type of file system also as well, what happens is uh, the basic problem what you're getting is uh, the storage, right? The storage. Yeah. Okay, yes. maybe when you're working on a personal computing system or else when you're working on your uh, desktop, okay, can you guys tell me what would be the maximum amount of uh, Stories that you can have in that uh, laptop or desktop, as per your knowledge. Oh, uh, maybe like in terabyte, two terabytes is the maximum. Maximum maybe one yeah. TB or something. Yeah. Yeah. One terabyte. I seven processor, I seven processor, one terabyte or two terabytes are. Uh, in terms of RAM, what you need, what you can have is that you can have something like. Uh, uh, 8 GB. 12 GB. Oh. Yeah, 12 GB. My system is having mm -hmm. 12 GB. My system will mm -hmm. take, uh, I'll show you, it will have 12 GB of RAM. Okay. So it has 12 GB of RAM. This is the normal laptop that I have. You can see, right? This is what is your 12 GB of RAM that you can have. But uh, in terms of production systems with uh, highly configured systems, you can have uh, 32 GB, 64 GB at the max, 128 of GB of RAM also you can have, but not more than that one. Okay. But not more than that one. So what happens is you see, uh, I'll tell you one thing here. When you take uh, the data, the data is exploding exponentially. The data is exploding exponentially, but 
when you take this storage uh, storage space and the processing power they are not going in the pace as with respect to the storage uh, sorry as with respect to the data also as well so that's why what is happening is that these are the two shortcomings what you are going to have here assuming that the second arrow is storage and the second third arrow is process and the first arrow is data what is happening is uh, uh, the existing systems in terms of storage as well as in terms of processing are not able to compete with respect to the pace your data is exploding okay that is the reason people thought of having uh, better storage systems people thought of having better processing systems for the purpose of uh, addressing these things what are the things here i want to have a better storage for the purpose of processing as well as for the purpose of uh, analyzing this particular data okay for the purpose of analyzing this particular data so that's why here when we talk about something called as big data what we want to have is that uh, we want to have highly advanced systems highly advanced systems okay that should satisfy these three challenges what are the three challenges it should have the capability of storing a larger data sets it should have the capability of processing those data sets as well as uh, it should have the capability of uh, processing analyzing this particular data sets only so that's why this uh, uh stories as well as this uh, processing along with your uh, what is the next one the analysis whatever you want to do that has to be done on not on small data sets okay but has to be done on uh, big or large data sets so here i have a question when you are talking about this large data sets uh, can anybody estimate what could be the minimum size of this data set is it gigabytes or terabytes Petabyte. Yeah, it might be petabytes. It might be terabytes. Terabyte is the minimum standard, uh, okay, mm -hmm. that I need to use for the purpose of storing, processing, along with your uh, analysis also as well. Okay, that type of data is generally treated as a big data. The type of data is generally treated as a big data. Yeah. Got it, Pinky. Loud news. Yes. 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 Narendra, your uh, what is this? Nagarjuna, you are comfortable? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Ravi, I have a question. Yeah, tell me. Uh, what is the big data and what is the Hadoop? What is the really yeah. uh, like a connection between? Okay. I am coming to that one. Okay. Now, to store this big data, do you think that uh, a single system will be sufficient, uh, Lavanya? No. A single system will not be sufficient to store this big data. Okay, but what is important? You need to have Multiple. a collection of uh, nodes. You need to have a collection of nodes. A node is nothing but a computer system, right? You need to have a collection mm -hmm. of system. Okay, this is one. We have this one. You know, in a data center, whenever you take something like Sears, Target, or uh, Bank of America, or Chase, something of this sort, the mm -hmm. Minimum number of nodes that exist within this data center will be something like uh, 4,000 to 5,000. That means yes. number of nodes that you can have. Okay, so those collection of uh, nodes, okay, connected in a network. Uh, what we do is that we call this as a distributed computing framework. Okay, the term that we use for the purpose of uh, collection of this particular nodes is what is called as the distributed computing. Can anybody tell me why this is called as distributed computing? Oh. The reason why this is called as distributed computing is uh, your data is not, the processing of the data is not uh, centralized at a single location, but instead it is spread across multiple locations. But instead it is spread across multiple locations. That is the reason we are calling this one as a distributed computing uh, uh, systems. Okay? We are calling this one as a distributed computing systems. Okay, so big data, when you want to achieve, what you need to have is that you need to have the collection of uh, systems, collection of nodes connected together to form a cluster, okay, mm -hmm. for the purpose of uh, doing two things, for the purpose of uh, efficient storage, for the purpose of uh, this efficient storage along with this processing. This is what is called as the big data. Okay. This is a, this is something what we generally treat this one as a big data here. Okay, now 
let me tell you one more thing. This is what is your big data here. Now, uh, Lavan is asking what exactly is Hadoop. Can you tell me what is the relationship between uh, database and Oracle? Database and Oracle? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Oracle is like an uh, interface to the data database. Maybe like uh, we uh, can you tell that uh, uh, Oracle is nothing but the platform where uh, your database concepts are implemented. Can we yes. say like that? Yeah. Similarly, Hadoop is nothing but the platform. Hadoop is nothing but the platform where mm -hmm. all these big data concepts has been implemented. Where all these oh. big data concepts has been implemented. That's why big data is always a concept. Uh, and Hadoop is uh, the name that has been given to this uh, distributed computing framework for the purpose of implementing this big data concept. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Now, one more thing here. That is what is Hadoop. Okay. Now, what is this Hadoop basically? It is uh, nothing but a uh, somebody has heard about this. Uh, we don't call this one as a Hadoop. Uh, we also call this one as a Apache Open Systems Framework. Apache Open Systems Framework. What exactly? Why this is called as Apache, and what is called as Open Systems Framework? Suppose when you work on Oracle, or when you work on .NET, or uh, any Microsoft product, or Oracle product, or SAP product. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. When you want to work on a particular application, you cannot work it on a free basis, right? You need to purchase yes. that license. Mm -hmm. You need to purchase that license, and you need to go through the libraries, understand the concept, and then you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Hadoop is not something like that. The reason Hadoop is not something like is uh, all the code or all the libraries that are related to processing this uh, big data framework architecture, processing this uh, big data framework architecture. Is openly available across the web. Is openly available across the web, and that open systems framework is generally treated as an uh, Apache open source systems framework. Uh, that is what is called as the open systems framework. So, mm -hmm. if you want to implement uh, one section of your uh, Hadoop activity, what you can do is that you can directly go to the net, download that application, and then start using that one without paying okay. even a single penny. That is the reason mm -hmm. it is called as a uh, Apache open systems framework, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have told you what exactly is Hadoop, what is big data, what are uh, uh, what is the need for this big data, and uh, why why are you using this particular big data. So let us go through a couple of slides, uh, okay, in order to uh, you know lack our understanding what you are having here in this case. Okay. Okay. First thing is that we need to understand uh, what is big data, what makes data big data here. As I have told you, right, uh, mm -hmm. it is nothing but uh, the data that requires. Uh, New architecture, new architecture in the sense uh, a single storage system might not be necessary, but we need to have more advanced systems techniques, okay, uh, to extract the value and the hidden knowledge from it. This is what is generally treated as a big data, but there is no standard definition for this big data basically. Okay, so big data can be characterized by three characteristics. One is volume. I has told you right, volume of the data is uh, growing uh, exponentially. Okay, nowadays we never talk about uh, terabytes. Terabytes data is gone. We talk about petabytes or exabytes or jettabytes. This is what we are talking about. So, data is increasing, and uh, the variety of data what you are getting. Earlier we had the data only in the form of structured tables, but we are having structured and unstructured along with your semi-structured data also as well. Okay, to analyze your data, streaming data, whatever you take, uh, all this uh, uh, complexity of data is coming up here. And third thing is uh, the rate at which your data is coming up. That is what is called as the velocity of data. Healthcare mountain and deep emotions. This is a place where uh, your, uh, you know, up to minute uh, decision making is required for the purpose of analyzing this data. So that's why these are the three characteristics that we generally talk about. Okay. And uh, there is one more thing, veracity. Don't bother about that one. But uh, this is what is generally treated as a big data. Earlier we were having the transactional systems and the analytical systems, but nowadays we talk about your. Uh, uh, RTA pair, real time analytical processing system that we have, which is nothing but your big data architecture here. Okay, so I told you right who is generating the data, social media, scientific systems, and uh, blah blah blah. These are all the things that you can be made available at any point of time. So, earlier, what was happening is that old model only few companies are generating the data and others are consuming the data. But now, 
everyone is generating the data and everybody wants to consume the data also as well right suppose if you know something we post it onto the facebook okay if uh, suppose when we want to go to a particular picture or a movie okay we generally don't go by uh, the word of mouth right we generally see the uh, suppose when you want to approach a doctor or when you want to approach a physician also as well we see the reviews based on the reviews only we will be able to take a decision right so that's why it's not only a certain section of the people who are analyzing the data but everybody would like to analyze this particular data also as well okay so this is what is uh, the model has changed now so this is not important but uh, anyway what technology do you have for this particular big data as i told you lavanya big data is only a concept but uh, uh, the technology that we use is nothing but your hadoop hadoop architecture that we can use basically so now let us come back here so i think uh, you guys are good with respect to the big data concepts right what we are talking about lavanya yes uh, yes, uh, yes ravi so here i don't want to get into the details but uh, when we talk about this hadoop hadoop will have two major components the reason being we are always talking about storage as well as we are talking about processing right we are talking about processing when you take anything uh, in terms of uh, storage and uh, processing th if this is something called as hadoop what we call this hadoop has having two things one is nothing but your uh, uh, hdfs and this is nothing but your map reduce Map reduce. HDFS stands for uh, Hadoop Distributed File System. This is stated as the Hadoop Distributed File System here. Hadoop Distributed File System, and uh, this map reduce is nothing but the set of algorithms that are used to process the data. set up algorithms set up algorithms to process this data okay storage is specified with the help of the hadoop distributed file system okay so that is the framework that is going to tell you uh, i'll tell you in very simple terms suppose if you have a collection of nodes node 1 is there along with uh, node 2 is there along with node 3 is there and node 4 is there here these are the different nodes that you are having here okay now assuming that uh, a client would like to store a particular file which is of uh, some 10 terabytes in size some terabytes in size so what this hadoop distributed file system will tell is that uh, it will split that particular file okay it will split that particular file in terms of 2 uh, uh, terabytes 2 tb 3 tb and 3 tb as well as uh, another 2 tb which is nothing but 7 2 tb and 1 tb assuming that this is splitting the data okay now it says that uh, let us store this 2 tb in the first node 3 tb in the second node and 2 tb in the third node like that it will split the data so that's why your whole whole data will not be uh, spread in a single system but it is spread across multiple systems that's why it is called as a distributed system okay now this is how the data is being stored now another thing what we need to do is that uh, why are we storing the data for the purpose of processing the data right so map reduce contains the set of algorithms that will dictate how this di distributed data has to be processed parallelly how this distributed data has to be processed parallelly that is being told with the help of this uh, map reduce algorithms map reduce algorithms but one thing that you need to understand is uh, map reduce is something like uh, a set of all uh, java libraries map reduce is nothing but set of all java libraries so that's why maybe you guys might have heard about uh, if you want to get into the hadoop development uh, people say that uh, java is mandatory is it the case uh, uh, guys is java mandatory yeah. yeah actually i heard that uh, core java is needed or something like that but i'm mm. not sure core java is needed for the purpose of getting this data here right core java is yeah. needed yeah people has uh, made it a mandate okay but code java is required for the purpose of uh, understanding this big data okay but reality is not going to be the case lavanya reality oh. is not going to be the case 
Yeah, I'm little bit worried. Uh, I have knowledge in .NET uh, 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 programming, C sharp, and everything, but Java I didn't have that but knowledge. But let me tell you one thing. But let me tell you one thing. One thing. Even though if you don't have any knowledge in any of the programming tools, any mm -hmm. knowledge in any of the programming tools, still you can excel your career in Hadoop. You can take it as granted. The reason um, I am saying is. Uh, in Hadoop, there are multiple disciplines that you talked about. I hope you understood right now. MapReduce yeah, yeah. is something uh, that is going to process this data. Uh, MapReduce is something that is going to process this data uh, by distributing the data parallelly in the parallel fashion that is going to process. And what is this Map MapReduce here? This is nothing but the set of all uh, Java libraries that are aimed at processing that particular data. So one thing is, uh, I would like to show you one uh, video. Okay, everybody talks about this wall mat and all these things that is fine, blah, 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 and all. So, just like uh, the, uh, just like uh, what I was telling, uh, every Windows applications or every type of systems will have their own uh, Play Store, will have their own Play Store, like, uh, just like uh, Apache Hadoop also will have this Play Store here. It, it is nothing but your Play Store, we call this one as a, how do you play store? These many components are this. These many components there. And where is your map reduce? Map reduce is only one component that we are talking about here, right? Lavanya, map yeah. reduce is only yes. one thing here. Mm -hmm. so we are talking about map reduce. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine into five. If you are having forty-five components, two components mm -hmm. of only one component only talks about Java. Okay. Um. But let me tell you. Uh, so you have this uh, Core Apache Hadoop, you are having this map reduce. Okay. But the Informatica, the big data, the micro strategy, Tableau, these are all the big data suits that we can have. And uh, the Hadoop distributions. Let me tell you what is what are Hadoop, Hadoop distributions. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, right, uh, Nagarjun, you know this one, right? Uh, Amazon is also one type of distributor for your uh, Hadoop big data, right? Yes, yes, yes. Web services. Like yeah. here, uh, Hadoop is uh, the implementation, core implementation. But in order to take this core implementation to the user community, there are so many implementation partners, uh, okay, who have taken the activity of uh, making this Hadoop reach the common man. Okay, those particular implementation partners are called as the vendors or the distributions. These are the distributions. So what are the common distributions you are having here? The most popular one is Cloudera. You have Hotter Networks, you have Mapar, you have Amazon as well as you have Microsoft. These are all the distributions that we talk about basically. Okay, mm -hmm. now, first thing is that uh, I want to store the data. As I have told you, you are having this HDFS app. I want to process the data. If I want to process the data, uh, then I want to process the data, then you have this MapReduce app. Okay, then the next question that is coming in here is, uh, uh, I'll tell you, Java for MapReduce. Then the immediate question that comes is that I don't know Java. The same thing what you have told Lavanya. Mm -hmm. I don't know Java and then I am more of a scripting guy. Script, what are the scripting guys you are having here? You know Java script, uh, the VB script, the Python, the Ruby, these things. Mm -hmm. In such a case, uh, you have multiple tools also as well. I have Pig that is there. Pig. Mm -hmm. Pig, is a, Pig Latin is a scripting tool that doesn't need any programming logic. Okay. But still, it can. It is nothing but a high-level abstraction of your MapReduce. It's just like this. It is a high-level data flow language. Okay. Mm -hmm. It and see. It is the scripting here. When you write the script and then when you submit automatically, what happens here? The pig interpreter will be converting them into MapReduce, and then it is executed against this distributed file system. Okay. okay. So that's why those people who can start using pig, or else the people who can. This is the pig here. Mm -hmm. It is nothing but a plain vanilla SQL. The SQL like it is going to be there. Pig is something like a plain vanilla SQL. 
and MapReduce understands only the structured data, but Piggy can understand both the structured along with the unstructured data also as well. This okay. okay. So these lines of code, what you are having here, is might be ten lines you are having here. The same thing when you want to implement in terms of Java, this is this much you need to write. Which one is better? Piggy is better or uh, uh, MapReduce is better? For me, it's Piggy is better. Yeah. So I don't. I'm not uh, pulling all the legs basically, but I'm telling you. People who are coming from analytics background, okay, they generally are bigger. People who are coming from programming languages, they uh, they understand this uh, map reduce. But the one thing what I have told you in this diagram is that uh, everything is going to be eventually converted into map reduce for the purpose of interacting with uh, HDFS. HDFS is the place where your ultimate data is going to reside, right? So that's mm -hmm. why big is going to be the high level abstraction. Okay. Okay. Similarly, there might be. People who might be coming from the database background, right? They might be mm -hmm. people who might be coming from the database background. In such case, yeah, pig seems to be okay, but I'm more of a SQL person. Then in mm -hmm. such a case, you are hang one more app for that one that is nothing but your hive. Oh. It is called as uh, Hadoop query language. We call this one as HQL. Oh. It is SQL okay. like language. We call this one as uh, uh, Apache hive. This is something like uh, you are seeing, right? Scripting language and then high query language is sitting on the top of your MapReduce for the purpose of interacting with your uh, Hadoop distributed file system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why no need to worry because uh, in Hadoop when you whenever you want to get into a job, okay, you have multiple opportunities, not uh, limited only to not limited only to this uh, uh, developer modules, right? Mm -hmm. So in Hadoop, uh, what we have is uh, we have the developer modules. We have the analyst modules, analyst modules, as well as we have the admin module. We can have the what you can say architects. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you might have heard about these days uh, these names here: data scientist, mm -hmm. data scientist. So these are all the various roles that you can do when you start working with big data. Okay, this particular course is going to cover. All the aspects of your development and analyst, uh, along with uh, some of the aspects of your admin module also, as well. This is going to cover. Okay. okay. But see, if you want to get into any of these particular roles, the basics are very much required, right? If you don't have the basics, you will not be able to take uh, take any of these particular things here. So yes. the, the reason what is uh, important is, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll show you one more thing. Here. This is entire. This is what is your uh, uh, entire uh, Hadoop ecosystem. This is what is your entire Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, see here: Zookeeper, Ambari, Uji, Flume, Scoop. Scoop and uh, Flume are basically the data integration tools. HDFS is a storage. We have this MapReduce. We have this uh, Hive, as well as we have this Pig. Uh, machine learning is nothing but uh, people use for the purpose of learning this uh, data scientist. HBase mm -hmm. is something that we use for the purpose of writing the uh, data warehousing applications on the top of uh, HDFS. Okay. okay, on the right hand side, what you are seeing are nothing but admin components, Ambari, mm -hmm. Zookeeper, and then uh, Uji, and then you have something like Mahout. These are all the different uh, uh, admin tools that you are having here. So we are going to see HDFS, MapReduce, Pig, uh, Hive, Scoop, Flume, and then Uji in detail, along with your HBS in detail. But uh, the administration concepts are also going to be covered. Which is going to be, because when you want to get into the admin, administration also, what is very much important is uh, what is very much important here is uh, understanding the core basics of each and every component in this uh, Hadoop ecosystem is very much important. Okay, so those concepts are going to be covered in detail in order to make you self-sufficient of choosing a career in many of these particular modules. That's how this uh, course is going to take up the things, uh, guys.